So today, we're gonna talk about a story that I have. It's probably one of my favorite stories uh, about me growing up. As a kid, I love water. I love streams, I love ponds, lakes, the ocean. I wanna skip rocks in it, I wanna fish in it, I wanna swim in it, I wanna know how deep it is, I wanna know the temperature, I wanna know all things water. My brother's the same way, we just love water. And as kids, my mom would drop us off at the pool, the local pool, and we would swim all day. We'd just have a handful of pennies, we'd throw them into the deep end, we'd dive around, try to catch them, we'd probably get hypothermia, we'd climb out, and we'd just lay on the cement to warm up, and we'd jump back into the water and swim. We did that all day, that was our summer. Absolutely loved it. As I got older, around fourth grade, my mom was ready to take us to the pool, and she said, are you ready to go? And I said, well, I'm not gonna go anymore. She's like, why? I was like, ah, I'm just not interested in swimming anymore. And I didn't go. And it wasn't that I wasn't interested in swimming. The problem was that I have a condition called pectus excavatum and people started to notice it. So what that is, and I'll show a picture of me as a kid with my shirt off, but you can see here is that my chest dents in and it's a pretty sizable dent that's sitting in there. So the reactions that I was getting from people was they were freaking out. They would look at it like, oh God. And they would recoil and say like, oh, it's disgusting. Or like, oh, it's so freaky. Can I touch it? And I have people touching it. And I just didn't like that attention. I didn't like getting picked on about it. So I just stopped going. I just didn't like it. Now what this condition is, it's where my sternum is actually dented in and I have too much bone growth or sternum growth or something and it pushes in into my chest. Uh, I, I didn't enjoy that stuff at all, and that was, you know, why I stopped going to the pool. Just going to the pool wasn't one thing. As school continued on, I had to deal with other stuff, and mainly that was gym class. So in gym class, we would have to get changed, and I would purposely show up to gym class early, or I would uh, be one of the last ones so I could change facing my locker so no one would see that I had the dent in my chest because it seems like everyone for, would forget every single day or every single week and then make a big deal out of it. And they would look at it like, oh dude, what is that? Do you, do you ever put like cereal in there and like eat your cereal while you're watching cartoons in the morning? Or, oh, I got an idea. Put some chips, in, uh, some dip in there. You can eat some chips and dip while you're watching TV. It's like, you dip the way you want to dip. I'll dip the way I want to dip. No, I don't do that. Can you play golf? Could you like lay down and I could just do like chip shots in there and you could be like the hole for the golf? Oh, why didn't you just go home? That's your home! It's like, no, like, you name it, I've probably heard it. And I just didn't like dealing with that stuff. So that's what I would do for changing for gym class. Also, when I was in school, we didn't have pennies, so you either had to wear your shirt or you had to take your shirt off. And it seemed every time I was put in the group, the team that had to have their shirt taken off. And I'd take my shirt off and it'd be the same thing. It's like, ah, oh, I've got an idea. Halloween costume, dude, Iron Man. Just put a light bulb in there, it'd be perfect. It's like, no, I don't, no Iron Man. It's like, oh, did someone ever just like punch you in the chest? Is that what it was? Like they punch you in the chest? No, can I touch it? Oh, that's so creepy. I just, again, didn't like it. It was just very annoying. So I learned a whole bunch of coping strategies to try to hide it. I either would make jokes about it, uh, or like I would wear two shirts, or I'd always stand like this. Um, I'd try to turn my back away from things. I would hold books in front of it. I think it was maybe like ninth grade, ninth or 10th grade. We we're standing outside waiting for the teacher to show up to class, and I was talking to this girl that I really liked, and we were discussing stuff, and I, I had my books in front of my chest, because that's, again, always what I did to try to hide that. And I was talking with her, I said something, I was like, oh yeah, you know, and I moved my arm out like that. And then she moved her hand, she's like, oh stop. And she hit my chest and her hand went down. She's like, oh, what was that? I was like, what was what? She's like, oh, nothing. And this guy next to me is like, what was what? I was like, nothing. He's like, oh, you haven't seen what he's got? Dude, lift up your shirt. Lift up your shirt, show her, show her. I'm like, stop, this is weird, dude. Just, you know, leave me alone. He's like, no, no, no. You gotta see this. Self. <laughs> Reveal yourself. And then other people are noticing, like, what, what does he got? What does he have? And everyone's like, what is it? What is it? What is it? And in my head, I'm thinking, I was like, ah, oh, that's it. I'm never gonna date a person ever in my life. 
lift up my shirt, and then they look at it and like, oh, that's so weird. That's so creepy. Oh, I got an idea. Cereal, milk, dump it in there, spoon, Saturday cartoons. How about it? And again, I was like, no, nah, I've heard that one. That was said in gym class earlier today. A better one, ice cream, hot, nice and cool right there. While it's, you know, sunny out there, you can eat the ice cream. It's like, no, that one's a new one, but no, can't do that one. So again, I just, I just felt horrible about that. And I was just like, that's it. Never gonna date anybody ever in my entire life is what I thought. And it was, it was quite depressing and quite sad. So high school starts to wind down. You gotta write some stuff in your yearbook. And one of the things that I wrote was a nickname I had. And there was only really, it was the guy that said, you know, lift up your shirt. He called me Dent Boy. And that was, you know, one of the things that I ended up uh, writing in there. I didn't like the nickname, but you know, it's a nickname and that's, that's the way it was. So I leave high school behind and all that. And I go to college and I say to myself, all right, things are gonna be different. You're gonna be a little bit more outgoing. You're not gonna let this thing run your life. And I mentally made that uh, commitment to myself. And I started to do that. It boosted my confidence. I started dating and the interesting thing about dating was that the girls that I dated when they ended up finding out or I showed them the dent in my chest I thought that was it they were going to leave Scott we need to talk yeah about what about me dumping you because they were grossed out about it and that was the end of you know that relationship and that was not the case at all the, I'd show them and they'd be like oh that's kind of weird uh, does it hurt you know, what's this, what's that? They'd ask some questions about it. And then that was it, done. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. You're like, you're not grossed out about this. This is not like you wanna, you know, end this relationship. Like, no, it's, it doesn't make you. Like, yeah, it's a part of you, but it's not your personality. And that just blew my mind. This whole time from middle school through high school, I thought that that's all people cared about. And that's all that somebody would look at is that dent in my chest. And I built this thing into a giant mountain when it really was nothing. And the way that you look at, at least the way I look at people, many times the things that make somebody interesting is the differences about them. So having something like this makes you special, makes you different, and somebody might actually like it, might like that difference about you. I know that that's true for my wife, that's true for my kids. The things that I like about them, it's not the things that that's everyone else shares in common, it's the special little things that make them um, uh, near and dear to my heart. So. Again, in high school, or sorry, in college, that was just mind opening. That that was the reaction that people had. And that's a great reaction also, in the sense that if people were grossed out about it and they didn't want to be around me because of something that I can't control, something physical about me, do you really want to spend time with somebody like that? I would argue that no, you don't want to. So that was um, my college career. Towards the end of college, I was able to read an article about what this was before that. I knew nobody else that had it. I thought I was the only one in the world that had something like this. And in the article explained what it was, and they explained some procedures to fix it. There's a, a procedure where they run a bar through your chest and it pops it out, this metal bar, and you leave it in for a couple years. There was one where they saw your chest open and reconstruct it. There's one where they put a toilet plunger on there to try to pop it out. Um, there are all kinds of uh, examples of ways to fix it. I obviously didn't get mine fixed. Because to get it fixed, it's sometimes difficult to have it covered by insurance and there's you know a whole bunch of other things that kind of go along with it. So that was uh, my college career. An absolute mind-opening and incredible time for me just in this realm to see that you know it's not necessarily what you look like that makes you, you. It's what's inside and that's what most people do care about. And that was college. So as I left college, uh, I learn more and more about what this was. And one of the neat things is there's a tremendous amount of information online. And I was able to become part of a Facebook group where it's just all people that have the same thing that I do. And I was able to ask questions. I said, do you guys feel the same thing? Like when you lay down on your side, does it kind of hurt when your uh, heart beats in there? Do you not like to sleep on your side? Uh, do you notice that you have colds that last longer or bronchitis that last longer? Are you afraid of COVID? Do you think COVID's going to impact me more than say somebody else? Uh, is this going to shorten my lifespan? There's been tons of questions that I've been able to ask. I don't always get the answers, but it's a neat place for people like me to get those answers. And you know, I really appreciate it. Uh, I really appreciate that group. 
Um, one of the things that I find incredible, if you look up what this particular pectus thing does, is yeah, it decreases your uh, lung volume, it maybe messes your heart up a little bit, uh, it might give you, you know, lingering colds or coughs, and the other thing is it gives a description on pretty much all of them is that it has psychological issues associated with it. And I can totally understand that based on all that I've talked about before, where if you are a kid and you're getting picked on for something you have no control over, that can be, you know, pretty depressing. Hey, look, Sergeant Dork. <laughs> and so people that have this often will have increased risks for uh, clinical depression. Um, they're going to have other types of psychological issues that go along with it. Um, I do believe I had some of that stuff, but I was pretty lucky in that, um, you know, I surrounded myself with some good uh, collections of friends. And for the most part, I, you know, I had some uh, good experiences with it, or not as bad as they would normally be. And I, you know, I had strong family um, too, to help me out as well. The other thing that I was very concerned about is, is it genetic? And I know that it is uh, because my uncle had it. It turns out I had an aunt that uh, has it and uh, my kids, like that was one of the biggest concerns that I had when my uh, kids were born, are they going to have it? And my son actually has a little bit of a deformity in the right side of his ribs. Uh, I think my daughter might have a little bit of it, but we're hoping that she'll grow out of it. And uh, again, I was able to ask the Facebook group questions about that as well and, and learn some things that way. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know, that part. So looking back at it, would I get rid of it or not have it? Yeah, probably I would not want it. But was there good that came out of this? Definitely. The way that I look at other people has changed based off of this. If I see somebody picking on somebody for some physical thing or something that they can't help, I will immediately say something. I, cause I know what it feels like and I don't like it. And you know, so that's, that's one thing that I, I feel that it's changed my view that way. Um, and I, I, I do think it's made me a better person. Yeah, there were some struggles to get through that, but in the end, I do believe it made me a better person. So, um, that's it. That's my story. We started with water and went through middle school, some ice cream, some Iron Man, Halloween costumes, college, surgery, and I'm here now. So um, I hope that you've learned something from this. I hope that if you see somebody that's physically different Yay! from you, you're not gonna be a jerk to them. You're not gonna make fun of them, give them a stupid nickname or pick on them. Just treat them like you'd wanna be treated. And hopefully uh, that is what you'll do. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this story. I hope that you've learned something and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.